special edition of Late Night Health. I'm Mark Gallon. I'm really excited because as you know, I am a nut about food, uh, having been a restaurant critic uh, early in my career. At 22 years old, somebody asked me, what do you think of sushi? Nobody knew what sushi was. I learned. But over the years, I have developed a wide variety of tastes and have actually tasted food around the world, Europe, uh, the Middle East, and uh, even over in, in Asia, in the Philippines. We are going to spend some time right now with the CEO of Bushwick Kitchen, and um, we're going to be talking with Dan Dahl. Uh, he is the CEO, as I mentioned. We're going to be talking about some wonderful products. Uh, they've supplied these to me, and I say wonderful because I've tasted several of them, and I am I'm in love. Uh, Dan, welcome to Late Night Help. Thanks so much, Mark. Thanks for having me. Tell me about uh, Bushwick Kitchen. What's it all about? So Bushwick Kitchen is a, a consumer packaged goods brand, uh, sort of inspiring uh, chef and, and sort of uh, you know, culinary creatives alike to you know challenge their taste palates, to challenge uh, how they treat their food, and really uh, provide them an avenue for culinary exploration. So we want to provide really unique flavors, give you a diverse way of using the products that we have in market. Uh, so you can make some really, really clever dishes. Uh, and instead of using condiments and sauces to finish a dish, creating dishes around your condiments and sauces, making them the center of attention. So instead of using mustard and ketchup, as you said, we can use sriracha or honey. I just tasted salted honey and it's really good. I'm going to do some tasting here and you at home are going to be very envious of me. Um, how, how are the sauces used? Do you cook with them or do you dip with them or both? I think the, the approach that we want to have conveyed to, to our consumers or people that receive it as a gift is that, you know, like you mentioned, ketchup is oftentimes treated as the thing where you, you get a burger and you get French fries and you ask for the ketchup to come and sort of be the, the finishing touch on your meal, something that you're going to apply at the end or dip your fries in versus taking a bottle of our sriracha or salted honey and sort of think about all the creative ways that you can utilize that in your food, but also in your in your cocktails, your beverages. Um, so we want you to be able to take a product that, that you bought from us uh, and think about all the different unique ways that you can do it and build your dishes and your culinary experiences around it um, versus using it just to finish a dish. And so there's a huge array of ways that you can use any of our products, um, both a lot of them, both savory and sweet, uh, and at all different points of your meal and in different sort of capacities. So as you go through and taste each one, I can kind of walk through different recommended ways. And, and then it's, you know, we sort of view it as a brand of our job to partner with culinary creatives, partner with bartenders, um, produce, you know, educational content to share with our, uh, you know, consumers and people that are fans of the brand of all these different ways and recipes that you can use the product. Yeah, interesting to me uh, that I hadn't thought about using these in cocktails. Not that I would in, imbibe a, an adult beverage, maybe once in a while. From time um, to time. Yeah. Um, in, in moderation. Let, let's talk about the ingredients. Uh, this is real maple syrup in your maple syrups. It's not uh, uh, sugar water and corn syrup. Yeah, you, you find a lot of people that, uh, you know, grew up on some of the national brands, uh, myself included, you know, what you're eating is actually not even maple syrup. It's what they can classify as syrup or table syrup, because using the word maple would be misleading. Um, they're, they're oftentimes first ingredient is high fructose corn syrup. And our sort of position is we want to take a premium position to the market. Uh, we want to keep our ingredient panel as clean as possible. Uh, and then really use um, some creativity to drive flavor and innovation. So when you talk about a maple syrup, it's pure organic, straight from the tree, organic maple syrup. Uh, we source from a couple different, um, you know, sort of uh, maple farms, both in upstate New York and in Vermont. Um, it's the highest quality that, that you can find held to incredibly high standards. And then we take that uh, sort of, organic pure product and then we add some of our flavor infusions that get you things like a spicy maple syrup and our gingerbread and cinnamon uh, and coffee that we're known for. Uh, the the um, the products are non-GMO? Yes, we don't have the sort of non-GMO project verified seal. Um, 
you know, but yeah. everything coming straight from a maple tap, uh, you know, it would, would qualify under that specification. It's uh, the Najimo project verification takes between six and 12 months for most right. brands to get. Right. Have you actually gone out and uh, stuck your head under a, a maple uh, tap? It's something I've, no, it's, uh, I've always wanted to do. I haven't put it directly from the tap. Uh, if I showed you some pictures, the the intricate wiring uh, uh, or, or tubing mechanisms that are set from uh, all these trees that sort of interface thousands of acres is truly incredible. So yes, I've been to the uh, facilities where we make the maple syrup, and as you know, it's a it's a complex process where you're tapping a tree, um, allowing that tree to sort of uh, produces maple syrup and it has to be sort of within a specific temperature range where the maple syrup um, is warm enough to flow but right after the winter and sort of the the, the maple sugaring season uh, it has to either be pumped or flow downhill into the maple house so usually you have trees on hills on the side and the, and the sort of maple house is at the bottom so that all the gravity can pull the maple syrup down and then from that point it's just a, a whole lot of uh, filtering and processing and um, you know, uh, evaporation to, to get it to a maple syrup versus a maple water, which maybe only has you know, less than 10% maple content as it's coming out of the tree. That's why it has to be evaporated down to syrup consistency. But the entire right. process is completely fascinating. And the technology that's evolved in that space for um, pressure sensing between all the lines, as you can imagine, you're in thousands of acres of woods in the middle of the winter. Right. So you have snow and ice and trees falling and the lines get cut. And so there's just crews of uh, people that go out every day, just repairing lines, miles of tubing. Um, to you make said sure the that magic that word goes. snow. So I will not be doing that. Um, yep. I'm a native Californian <laughs> after all, Southern Californian. Uh, uh, you, uh, you actually left uh, uh, school. You were working on your MBA to join Bushwick kitchen. Um, are you that much of a foodie or did you see, <laughs> did you yeah. see a, a, a light at the end of the tunnel? So, uh, so I was at American university where I was getting my undergrad at the time. And I started uh, our, our four end, four a into the CPG space or consumer packaged goods. Uh, we started a soap company that we wrote the business plan for in college and sort of built this infrastructure for CPG brands for sales, sort of the key areas of business sales, marketing, you know, finance, uh, and operations. And so uh, as we met the folks that were founders of, of Bushwick Kitchen, we saw just a great synergy of taking the product and the brand that they built and sort of integrating it into our supply chain and infrastructure and to really help them scale and grow. And so we made that sort of merger back in 2018 um, and have just been sort of integrating the process ever since. Uh, um, and to the point where we've now been able to add SKUs, uh, we've been able to professionalize our production um, tweak our recipes to make them scalable on, on a larger scale. Uh, and those are the products that you have in front of you today. So, um, you know, now we're taking the next step and going back out into sort of retail, aiming to scale our Amazon business, um, make some, some strategic partnerships with um, some of the larger retail chains to carry the product. You guys, you um, just uh, get, cut a deal with um, Walmart. Yeah. So it's a pretty, pretty that's, non-conventional deal. That's a big deal. retail. It is a big retailer and, and a little yeah. bit unconventional for a specialty brand like ourselves. But I think what we're seeing in the space is a bit of this renaissance where um, at all levels of retail, whether you're talking sort of Walmart as sort of an entry level price point retailer or someone as high as, you know, Crate and Barrel selling premium you know furnitures, everyone is trying to activate the consumer that's interested in food. Um, people can drive their passion behind food. It's inherently social in, in, in creation of dishes. Uh, people love to share it. Um, they're passionate about what they eat and what they put in their bodies, what they share and give to friends. And so uh, Walmart has, has actually been a very innovative partner in how they've approached the breakfast category in terms of its partners in maple syrup and in breakfast items and um, in a way more progressive than some of the retailers that you might expect that you would find that sort of uh, progression from. And so we're super happy to be partnered with them. And, and for us, it brings accessibility um, it brings scale to our business, which allows us to drive the overall price down. Um, it helps our partners in uh, the maple farms that we work with to um, to help sort of uh, get their crops sold at high prices. Uh, and it allows us to be ubiquitous. We can say pretty much in every region of the country, you can go into Walmart and find our product. 
uh, and use it to create dishes in your own home, not just in New, in New York or in, around Brooklyn, where we were originally from, not just in DC, where we're from now, but all over the country. And even here in Southern California. Uh, I'm, you know, with COVID-19, uh, my wife and I are, we're frankly bored with food because it's the same thing, you know. We have our favorite pizza place. Well, it's no longer our favorite pizza place. We have our favorite, you know, uh, the Chinese place. Uh, we have two or three Chinese places, different, different styles. But after four and a half months, and it looks like we're going to continue this, um, uh, you know, having a product like, uh, like uh, uh, the Sriracha, this is one of my favorites. It's a Korean uh, influence Sriracha. And it just, it wakes up the, the appetite and actually opens up the brain synapses because it's not boring anymore, right? Yeah, so that, that's our whole goal. It's a perfect time to buy this stuff. Yeah, exactly. And I think just like a lot of other sort of brands in the space, we, we are seeing online sales really increase. Uh, we partnered with a couple of retailers online like Food52, Amazon, um, and the sales on both platforms um, are just at a, at a totally high elevation. And I think you know, a lot of people are taking the approach of, well, you know, I can't, I can't go out to eat. I'm not getting any meals uh, at my job. I'm not going out with colleagues. And so my Uber Eats bill is through the roof. Um, but also, you know, I'm participating in, um, you know, a, a farm share program to get vegetables or produce. Uh, you know, I'm bringing in, you know, an at-home meal service or I'm going to the grocery store once doing a huge load and buy, I'm bringing in all my meats, all my veggies, you know, all the proteins, and then I'm cooking at home and I'm using this as an opportunity to say, okay, let's, you know, make lemonade out of lemons. I'm home. I might as well cook for myself and, and either sort of re-engage that passion or create a new passion. Do you and have so, young kids? Do you have young kids? I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. All right. A three-year-old? Oh boy. Yeah. Turned three I in April them my daughter they... turned one in February. Oh, congratulations. They, they, Thank you. The reason I, I tell you that is that eventually they they grow up, they move to the other side of the country, and you don't <laughs> see them anymore. Oh, I'm sorry. I, um, uh, is your three-year-old uh, 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 tasting some of the honeys? Yeah, he. Uh, his most interesting thing is to dabble in, uh, in whether he likes spicy or not. So uh, he's actually a fan of our curry sriracha. Wow. Which uh, in, in our spice is a little bit less spicy than our traditional sriracha. We're right on the same par, but we have a super spicy version as well. He won't touch that one, but, um, you know, he likes to dabble around with the spicy food. And, and so does my daughter at, uh, you know, she was one in February. Uh, so I guess we're close to one and a half now, but um, she, uh, we were eating some spicy noodles yesterday and she was interested in it. Oh, that's so. really good. But you're not... You're not letting her have the honey yet. Uh, we haven't had her have honey. I know that the the recommendations are for children under one to stay right. away from honey, but I think above and beyond that, you know, it's mm -hmm. honey is actually a great thing for overall health and and uh, immuno building. Um, are are your so over a period are, of time? Are your honeys raw honeys or are they pasteurized? So because most of our honeys that uh, we sell the predominantly uh, in the market are infused with something, the, the regulations require us to pasteurize. Um, you know, so raw honey, by definition, should be heated less than 110 degrees. Uh, there's a little bit of debate on that, but on average, most people would say below 110, you could be considered raw. Um, we have to heat up a little bit higher when we're adding in things like the Meyer lemon juice concentrates uh, as you're entering sort of outside sources into, into the honey itself. Um, so we, uh, unfortunately can't call it raw honey, but you do still get a lot of those, uh, those health benefits through right. it. And obviously you get the delicious taste, um, which is great. Uh, we're recording this in the morning and uh, I haven't had breakfast yet, so I'm going to do some tasting and I have some eggs, uh, waiting for me and I will be putting some of the srirachas on the egg. Uh, I never use ketchup ever, ever, ever on uh, on on eggs but the sriracha and eggs is is a perfect blend i'm going to taste this is a korean in <laughs> excuse me korean inspired sriracha 
Uh, I have actually been trying to find uh, the this uh, spice uh, because I love Korean food. Uh, I always have a jar of uh, kimchi in the in the refrigerator, and I put it on chicken, I put it on beef, I put it on everything. And uh, but I haven't been able to find this even in my local Korean market because they're out of it. But thank you. And this yes. is really, really terrific. Tell us about this. Yeah, so uh, most of the stuff that we provide, like I mentioned, the maple syrup comes from uh, you know, maple farms in the U.S. Obviously, uh, we don't have gochujang in, in the U.S. It's a Korean product. It's a fermented bean paste. And what it does is it provides a lot of really depth of flavor to what we believe in sort of traditional sort of the green top syrup that you might be familiar with. It provides mm-hmm. a little bit more depth of flavor. So where you, you sort of taste chilies and a little bit of heat in your traditional sriracha. Um, we believe that the gachujang sort of provides a bit more of a sort of um, sweetness, umami sort of flavoring that brings just a ton of depth to the flavor. And so a lot of people um, will comment that ours is sort of like sweet and spicy um, and has more of a well-rounded sort of flavor profile than just heat. Um, by no means is it spicy. I think if you use it in, in quantities, it'll, it'll catch up on you a little bit, but, um, you know, for the heat heads, we have a super spicy version of it, which we got by request. Um, mm. we got two main requests, a spicier version and, uh, a larger version, uh, because people are going through too many bottles a month, which I guess is a good problem to have. But yeah, um, that, uh, that really is. One of the things that I like about it is that it has flavor as well as heat. Uh, right. There are, you know, there are some habanero products and other pepper products that are just heat. And while heat is good, I like taste, you know? Yeah. Our, our kind of approach on, on spice is it shouldn't be a frontal assault. Uh, it should be something uh-huh. that, um, you know, most people don't want to be in pain when they eat their food. Uh, I totally get the hot wing challenges. I've participated in a couple as well and have a pretty good heat tolerance. But at the end of the day, I, I prefer to taste my food. And, and if, you're, if your approach as a brand is to have people build dishes around the sauce versus using a dash of the end of a ghost pepper, you know, million Scoville product, yeah, I want you to be able to use it in everything. You're not going to put that on your eggs in the morning because you've ruined your morning, right? For right. us, I want you to be able to take the sriracha and be able to put it on what you eat for breakfast, what you're eating for lunch what you're having in, in, in your Bloody Mary, uh, and also uh, what you're having for dinner. And that could be eggs in the morning, a sandwich for lunch, and an Asian noodle dish for dinner. And it's going to fit into all of those things. Um, it, so if it, I can inspire you that yeah. way, that's, that's what we would prefer to do. Are there recipes and ways to use the products at uh, uh, bushwickkitchens.com? Yeah, absolutely. So just go to the website, bushwickkitchen.com. We have a recipe tab right on the top. Um, we also have gift sets and all of our gift sets come with recipe cards. Um, like I mentioned earlier, you know, we, there's a lot of, I think hot sauce and sriracha has, has, has started to make the sort of renaissance into a more widely used um, ingredient. But if you take something like honey, what I tell people most of the time is that honey is traditionally viewed as the ingredient that your grandma put in her tea. Right. Um, it was sort of singular use. You only use it a little bit. And so that honey bear that you bought for five bucks at the grocery store lasted you for over a year. Um, whereas when I talked about, when I talk about sort of a spicy honey and how you can utilize that on pizza or how you can put it on your cheese plate when you host, um, use it as an agave substitute in your margaritas, you know, it's, uh, it changes the game a little bit. And, um, we have people that are sort of like, well, I was using a bottle of honey a year. Now I'm using one every other month. Well, this is uh, we're going to, I'm going to taste this one here. This is the spicy maple. So that one's fantastic. So that's our organic maple syrup from um, mostly New York and Vermont. Um, and so mm. for that, it should have a little bit of back end spice, front end sweet, back end spice, uh, not to the point where the ruin your breakfast, like that ghost pepper I mentioned, but enough that you can think, okay, well, I can place this on my on my pancakes that I would be eating with the family on on Sundays, but I could also use it on chicken and waffles, and I could make it into a nice spicy vinaigrette. Um, and those and recipes, a lot of people like those them. kinds of uses are on the are are on the website. And there's some Absolutely. interesting. Uh, I've got a butter maple over here, and I've got a salted honey, which I tasted earlier, 
before I, uh, Dan and I connected. And I was blown away. I wasn't sure I was going to like that. Uh, what, give me a use for salted honey. So salted honey, people, people love it a couple of different ways. So it's two ingredients. It's flour salt, which is basically a really, really cor- uh, fine salt. So you have like sea salt being the coarse version. You have flour salt being uh, sort of on the, on the finer scale of things. Um, and when we mix those together, it tastes like salted caramel. And so a lot of people like to drizzle them on vegetables and then throw them in the oven. So instead of salting, a lot of people salt and pepper their vegetables, you can use the salted honey so you get a bit of a sweetness and you get the salt factor as well. And that helps, the honey helps caramelize when you're actually put, adding heat. So you can use it as a glaze if you're putting something in the, uh, in the oven or on a grill. Um, but you can also drizzle it on ice cream and people love it on ice cream. Anywhere that you could think that you would eat caramel, uh, you can use salted honey as a replacement. I just had a, a thought for, the, for it as well. I'm not a broccoli lover. Mm-hmm. This would make broccoli palatable to me. I, I know it's healthy yeah. stuff, but this, you know, and roast the, roast the, uh, the, 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 the broccoli. Now you have a Mark Allen recipe coming up. There you go. You know, you roast the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the broccoli uh, on a flat pan, maybe with some, uh, with some olive oil. And then you mix in some of the, the, uh, the honey or even the spicy honey or maple and now yeah. you can actually eat the broccoli. <laughs> Just a thought. Yeah, people love them on sprouts, asparagus, uh, broccoli. I mean, it's it's a very common thing when you have um, you know something that's going to get sort of pan roasted. Um, just to add a little bit of depth and flavor. Um, using it sort of as a, as a spice substitute instead of salting it, you can use the honey um, and the spicy honey if you want a little bit a little bit of kick. Right, I, I, and the curry. Uh, you have a curry product uh, and that would be great on cauliflower because I love curry yeah. cauliflower. All right. Two recipes. I expect to see them on the website. Um, you, you also have some kitchen uh, tools and things like that. Just briefly as we're running out of time, tell us about your, your kitchen tool stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we have some gift sets and, and we offer some, uh, some branded sort of tea towels as part of a, uh, a gift set. So they'll have usually three products and, you know, nice branded towels and those recipe cards that I mentioned. Um, you know, I think the, the benefit of being Bushwick kitchen is that the name sort of evokes a platform and the way that we think about it is that anything that really touches the kitchen, um, you know, we can, we can extend to as a, as a product range, whether it's a tool that helps you utilize, uh, or whether it's, um, you know, taking our, our sriracha, with pe- which people love, and turning it into a, a powder and allowing you to put it on popcorn. Um, so you can do that. Sort of. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. So we can we can uh, we can do all those sort of things. And as a brand, you know, you, you sort of ask yourself, you know, where do you have the permission to play from your consumers? And in our opinion, anything that you can utilize in the kitchen that you know helps you explore culinarily uh, is is sort of in our wheelhouse. Well, I think so that- from a I'm I, sorry to interrupt. I, I, I just think, again, with people being bored, I mean, they're, people are learning how to cook. They're trying new recipes and stuff. Uh, this is going to give you a, you know, a real heads up, uh, head start. Uh, and your family is gonna, gonna, going to love this. I, I meant to ask earlier, I, I, I asked if you were, yourself were a foodie. Um, did your parents do your parents uh, cook uh, or, or or were they meat and potatoes uh maryland people <laughs> yeah so uh we're in maryland now born and raised in new jersey so uh the land of the jersey diner um my mom is greek uh so we frequented a lot of diners and so we definitely got a, a good amount of sort of uh greek inspiration in our early cooking um and uh yeah i'm a passionate foodie um you can't see the waistline, but if you did, you, you'd understand why. Uh, and my wife is too, and she loves to cook. So I, I do love to cook. I don't get a ton, as much time as I would like. Uh, um, and that's why, you know, something like a product that we sell really appeals to me because you can take an average dish and make it extraordinary with, with just a simple addition of a couple of sauces. Um, you know, one of my current favorites is our curry sriracha. Um, you know, it's probably closest to the taste that people would recognize from a currywurst, if you're familiar with that. Mm -hmm. Um, but when I first sort of tasted that, when we created it, um, I just, 
I put it on burgers. I put it on hot dogs. I put it on sandwiches, everything. Um, and I've got a couple other things that, that I'm working on from an R and D perspective that got I'm it. pretty, pretty, pretty fired up about too. I think you should do a, a Greek inspired grilled octopus, which is one of my favorite things to eat. A lot of garlic in there and yep. it's hard to find. Okay. There are two Greek restaurants here in the Ventura County area of Southern California, neither one has it. And I ask for it all the time. I'd make it myself. I had a friend who had a Greek restaurant for years in the San Fernando Valley and his, his octopus was tender and, and sweet. And obviously it was wild caught uh, and delicious. And it's healthy for you, by the way. It's a, a, a good, good protein source. So uh, just it's an easy a, dish to uh, to mess up, but when it's oh, done yeah, well, absolutely, it's uh, you can incredible. Make it, you can make it like rubber, yeah, uh, which is what you don't want to do. Uh, Dan, thank you very much. Uh, we've had uh, the website up throughout our our conversation here. I really appreciate it. Will you come back as you come up with some new recipes? And uh, if you need a taster, I uh, I volunteer. Well, thank you very much for having me. Really appreciate it. And we've got a lot of new uh, innovations on the pipeline. So we'll, we'll make sure we come back on the show and share those with you soon. All right. That'd be great. Uh, our guest, Dan Dahl, he is the uh, CEO of Bushwick's uh, Kitchen. And uh, are you, you're based now in D.C. rather than Brooklyn, right? Headquartered in D.C. We still manufacture everything in, uh, in New York. Uh, we outgrew our facility in Brooklyn. So we moved to uh, manufacturing partnerships uh, throughout the state of New York. But everything's still, still made in New York. Gotcha. My favorite place, or it used to be until COVID. Anyway, uh, try this stuff, uh, folks. Go to, uh, you know, next time you're online at Walmart or uh, go to the website and, uh, and try these things. They, they, I haven't had one that I, I don't like. Uh, and I, I mean that uh, uh, 100%. As I said, uh, Bushwick's has provided me with a number of samples, and, um, but they didn't pay for my, my comments. I wanted you to know that. Uh, Dan, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. I'm Mark Allen. Join us at LateNightHealth.com. That's LateNightHealth.com.